Okay, this is part two of Checkpoint. So in the first um, part, I talked about how you move and hit the checkpoint. Well, you could fall in the pit and you go back to the beginning of the stage. Or if you cross the flag and it turns green and then you fall in the pit, then you go back to the flag. So in this situation, uh, I said before I'll do the I'll do a video on a you know a bad guy or something. So in this part, there's there's two bad guys. One is red and one's I believe yellow. So if you hit the bad guy that's red, like if you jump over the flag and you hit the bad guy that's red, you, you'll jump back at the beginning of the game because you didn't hit the checkpoint. If you hit the checkpoint. The bad guy will turn orange or yellow, and when you hit him, when he's yellow, then he'll you'll jump back to that position that you hit the bad guy in, because you hit you cross the flag and made it green. Uh, same thing applies if you fall in the pit. If you hit the, if you don't hit the flag and it's red, and you go into the pit and you go at the beginning again, and you lose a life at the top. If you cross the flag, then when you fall in the pit. You lose a life and you go back to the flag position. The same applies with the bad guy. So let me just show you real quick. Fall in the pit. You lose a life at the top. And you start from the beginning again. Jump. Hit the flag. And see how the bad guy switched to uh, yellow. Now, of course you don't have to have the bad guy switch to a different color. I just did that for an indicator to show that when you hit the flag, the boss is going to turn a different color, or the bad guy is going to turn a different color. That way, when you hit him, he jumps that position again. So when you hit him, you go back to the flag. Or you fall in the pit, you go back to the flag. And after all your lives are gone, you die and end game. So let me show you one more time. If I don't cross the flag, see if I can... I have a setup where if I click on the flag with my mouse, then it would be destroyed, I believe. Oh, I don't have it set up that way. Let's, let me see if I can just jump over it. Ah! Alright, let me just take the flag out. So supposedly I, I was able to jump over the flag, or the, I could have put the bad guy in front of the flag, could have done that. That would have been probably the, the better way of doing it, but... Now if you hit the, the bad guy when he's red, it goes back to the beginning. See? And so if you cross the flag, he switches to a yellow image of the bad guy, and then when you hit him, he goes to that position. Now, when you do your um, your game, um, you can also have a setup where the bad guys are placeholders, and I've talked about that. Where they will they they will start doing their um, action in the game once you get to a particular point in the game. When you cross the line, the placeholder will turn to the bad guy, and then he'll throw his weapon out, which will make a sound. And that's the same as that's the same. I've done that before. I talked about a video on that about how a block will fall and make a sound once you cross a line. Same applies to a, a bad guy. If you cross a line, the placeholder will switch to a bad guy and he will do his thing trying to kill you and stuff like that and make a sound. <clears throat> but in this situation, like I said. You die, you go back to the beginning because you haven't crossed the flag. So, and the same thing would apply if you if he throws a weapon out. If he's red, he throws a weapon out, and he hits you, then you go back to the beginning. If you if you cross the flag and he switches to yellow, um, then the weapon will also switch to a yellow. So if the weapon that is thrown out at you and you get hit, then you go to that position. So the same thing applies. Um, but like I said, I just had him switch to a different color to show an indicator that he had changed to a different bad guy. Um, but he does the same thing as the first one. He's just going to go to a different location once you cross the flag. 
So that's what is happening here. All right, so let me show you how I did that. It's pretty it's pretty much simple compared to what I did before. I mean, it's, it's the same kind of concept. So go to the object right person here, because that's why, where everything is at. The object left is parented to the right, so you don't have to have anything in there. So when he crosses the flag, it's going to switch bad guy 1 to bad guy 2. Okay. Same thing when I talked about um, the the pit. When the red, the red square will switch to a green square once you cross once you cross the flag and it turns green then when then when the flag turns green the red square will turn green same thing applies to the the bad guy when you cross the flag and turns green it switches the bad guy from red to orange but like I said in your game you can keep them the same color it's just I'm just showing a different indicator here that it's switched so when so it's kind of I have it a little different here but same thing with the code in a way all right so basically um if the original bad guy when you first start the game which is red if he um if you hit him when you don't cross the flag then and let's see move tab drag over a jump start jump start self which is your character object right goes back to the beginning of the game and you lose a life new lives minus one set that to relative that information is in the score tab right here set life so you're, you're losing a life set it to relative so it applies to you and then um, when you start game you have uh, set lives of four you have four lives do not check the relative and that's right here the set lives and in the score location and object lives is the image I used now when you do object lives and I know I talked about this in previous videos but leave you want to leave space around the image here for your lives that way when your second life box comes up around here it makes a, a gap in between the two boxes if you if you make this completely only up to, up to this if you make all the space right here around the, the this gray area if you make this all nothing there and just make it tight around the box then all your images of your lives will be so close to one another that you won't see the you won't you won't see the the squares so i guess if you want a health bar set up you could do it that way where um you have it so close so if you if you want to make it look like a health bar then get rid of all of the extra gray space around it and make sure it's tight up against the image then when you lose a life it will look like a health bar you you drop a square and it looks but you don't want that if you want to do lives you want to have it spaced out so that's why i have a gap around the image here um, and you don't need any origin set up see well I do have it set to rectangle but still you want to have some space in between around the perimeter of this so that way you have a gap so you have your square starts right here in the second life and repeats that way but like I see if you have no gray space around the image and it's so tight then it will look like a health bar when you you know get rid of one you won't have any gap space that's what I'm talking about okay so and that's all you need to set up here make sure it's visible and then with your lives that's going to be this question mark here you don't need a sprint setup it's called an object lives 
do a draw event. I I checked this out on my phone. Do not do not use the draw GUI because if you do if you use a G, the draw G, G, draw GUI, it's going to make your images a lot larger and it's not going to be in the right position when you look at it on your your phone for some reason. On the computer it looks fine. But on the phone, no, it does not. So make sure you keep it at draw. Do not use the draw GUI or the resize because it will enlarge the image and take up most of the space on the phone or your tablet device. Make sure you set it to draw. I don't know what happens here, but it enlarges the images for some reason. So keep it at draw. And then go to your score tab, bring in your draw life images. And the X position is at 32, the Y is at 100. That's the position of where you want the squares at on your screen. And then the images is this image right here, object live box. I just selected that object live box at the bottom there. Set it to relative. So the live box is going to be that object right here. Visible, of course, and that's that. Now back to um, the bad guy. So when you hit the bad guy, I already talked about it. He jumps back to the main screen. But if you, if you hit the flag and makes makes it green, then this bad guy will it'll switch from red to orange or yellow, and then he'll jump to jump to position. So in the first video, I had a, a script for that. But in this situation, I mean, you, you can do it this way too. So I use jump to position, X at 2, 3, 2, 8, Y is at 1, 4, 8, 5. That's the same position as when you um, you want to go over the flag, you'll jump in that flag position spot. So when you cross the flag, it turns green. You get hit by the, the bad guy somewhere else in, in the game. You jump back to the flag position, which is this these coordinates right here. And that's at the move tab. I got that jump to position. Set it to self. And then you lose the life because you hit the ball you hit bat the bad guy or the boss or whatever. Minus one, set it to relative. And like I said, when you hit the when you cross the flag and make it green, it's gonna switch bad guy one to bad guy two, and bad guy one is the red, bad guy two is the orange. So the same thing applies when, when you cross the flag and you fall in the pit. It's going to switch the red to green. And when you hit the green, you go back to the flag position. If you hit the red, you go back to the beginning of the stage until you die. So using the jump start position for the red, when you hit the green, it's going to jump to these coordinates, which is the same coordinates as the, the bad guy. When he switches to a different bad guy, goes back to the flag position because you cross the flag and that's pretty much it oh and then when you have no lives for object right then it's going to end game so it's going to end game when you have no more lives and that will conclude this video right here. Um, just want to make sure I covered everything. I do believe. I know I had it set up. Um, I think I watched the video on YouTube, and it said to do a go to add event and do a create event for your set your lives. Don't do that for studios. It doesn't work right. I know. Uh, it works fine for Game Maker 8, but for studios, if you use Crate for Set Your Lives, then when you die, when you lose a life and you turn the other direction, like you go right and you die, and then you turn left, then you gain you gain a health block for some reason. I don't know what, why. So for studios, do not use the Crate for setting your lives. It does not work right. For Game Maker 8, it works fine. Or Game Maker 8.1, it works fine for Crate. But for studios, you don't use Crate. You use Game Start to set your lives. 
so that will conclude this video and I will do another one soon probably next week thanks for watching